We are inshallah gathering here tonight for a the what might be the final Mawlid al Nabi of this holy month of Rabi'ul Awal. Because today I think it's the twenty eighth. So tomorrow might be the last day of Rabi'ul Awal. And it is a month that most many Muslims nowadays have been scared away from honoring and celebrating. Uh, not just the month for itself but because of the one who graced that month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored that month by choosing that month to be the month of the birth of his most beloved most honored servant in creation so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Sayyidina Adam honor by creating him on Friday Juma. why Juma is Eid? Juma is a very special day that has been given to the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu It is the best day of the, of the week. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala honored Sayyidina Adam Alayhi Salam by creating him on that day to show the, uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala showing the honor of the creation of Bani Adam, the honor of creation of human beings by creating them on the best day that he, cre he created, Juma. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad. He honored Monday by creating Prophet on, on that day. Because one uh, subtlety is that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Prophet on a Friday or in Ramadan or one of those special months, then people may, you know, later, later on come and say, <coughs> oh, he's special because he was born on a special time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a special city like Mecca for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so forth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him on Monday. That Monday became Eid because when they asked him, why are you fasting on Monday? He said, it's the day I was born on. So it became a day of com commemoration. It was a normal day, nothing special about it. Prophet ﷺ was born on that day. It became a special day. Similarly, Mecca, Allah created it, and he put his house in it. And that house is reflecting Al-Bayt Al-Ma'mur in heavens. That house on earth, what's... Uh, above uh, the Kaaba in heavens is called Al-Bayt Al-Ma'mur. Also on earth, this Kaaba, this house reflecting that reality. So that Mecca became a very special place, Haram. It's, it's, a, it's Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala's chosen place. But your Nabi, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, moved from Mecca to a normal city. City that was called Yathrib. People lived there, had some dates. Nothing special about that city, Medina. As soon as he enters Medina, it name, even the name changed from Yathrib to Medina Tul Munawwara, the city of lights became. So what we're trying to get to is that you and us and all Muslims have also been honored Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us Kuntum khayra ummatin You have been chosen as the best ummah that appeared in creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us Muslims You have been, you have been given the, the rank of the best nation A wife, what did we do? In terms of deeds We do less than all the other nations that came before us in terms of ibadah, in terms of why are we special? Because we are connected to the most honored one, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because we are followers of the Imam of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are followers of Khayru Khalqillah, the most honored one in creations. So we are the Ummah of who? Muhammadun Rasulullah. That's why our rank, shut up above all other nations. Medina became the best place in existence because of the shrine of Sayyidina Muhammad, because of his holy body is there by Ijma' al-Ulama. 
consensus of ulama in Islam agree that Prophet Sallallahu maqam is the most honored place in creation. This is not something we're bringing. This is throughout the hundreds of years that passed, all ulama of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah have agreed that, that even that, the place of his, the, the, most, the most holy city is Mecca. But the actual spot, the most holy spot in creation is the Qabr of Prophet And look at his, uh, the, the presence of Prophet, how it transforms. He says, ما بين قبري ومنبري صلى الله عليه وسلم Between my, my grave and my minbar روضة من رياض الجنة Is a garden of paradise. I don't know if you've been to Hajj or you've been to Umrah or you've been, Alhamdulillah, Allah grant us to go again. But if you've been, you, you, you have to go sometimes at 1 a.m. in the morning, sometimes early, sometimes you have to be there in order to be from the first ones to enter there because everybody wants to pray in Jannah. You want to pray in, in, in the Garden of Paradise. Huh? queue up and, and then when it fills it fills and you, you you made it you made it you didn't make it you have to try again next day <laughs> because throughout you <laughs> so that is the rawda so you never why why is that place why did it become uh a place on earth with carpet now you go they have very nice green carpet in there check the, the Normal place, yani if you look at it from just the eyes of physicality, without our, not from our hearts, but if we just look at it physically, it's just a normal place. But that place, Prophet ﷺ said, in Sahih Hadith, it is a chunk of heaven. You enter it, you put your foot in there, this, is, this is, now becomes a garden of paradise. Because where did you Nabi, in Medina, the whole Medina became honored. You see? But where did your Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spend most of his time? He would be in his house, he would come to sit where his member is, where he prayed. And that's where he would advise the people and that's where he would sometimes meet the people. So between, that's where he spent most of his time. Because of that, that place became garden of paradise on earth. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi. Because of his holy presence. So when we're talking, people think it is too much. Some people, because they're not used to now. Now, 100 years, last 100 years, especially the last 50 years, with the uh, advent of media and so forth, people have worked hard to, 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 to convince Muslims that their Nabi is nothing special. He's like a postman, Allah, that he just brought the book, delivered it, and now he has no role to play and unfortunately because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided them with the resources they managed to teach so many imams uh, print so many books to convince Muslims that their prophet is nothing special is not important for their spiritual life has no role to play for them in their in their lives when before that 1400 years ago, all these people now, Mawlid Daybari, we're going to recite, it's, it's seven, eight hundred years old. Some to Durar, uh, Durar. These were not Sunnis, they were not Muslims that were writing these Mawlids. Qadi um, Iyad, in his book Shifa, talking about the rights of Prophet on us, his rights on his Ummah, how we should honor him, how, should, how we should. Uh, understand his status, how we should know his importance in our spiritual life and how even today we are still benefiting from his uh, relationship with his Lord, his status with his Lord, his Ummah is benefiting till today and how we're all going to benefit in Akhir as well from our Nabi, how we're going to benefit in the grave from follow being followers of our Nabi. So this is now something unusual people don't hear. so when you speak like this they think it's too much but this is not too much this is not even scratching the surface surface of the reality of your nabi because people we 
have a limited understanding and we think that if you praise a man too much by giving him uh, saying things about him that are beyond uh, the the abilities of all human beings that people that somehow you are now worshiping him this is what our brothers accuse Sunnis of but this is not something no they don't have an issue with shaitan being with everyone at all times and he is the cursed one he is the most despised one in creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse him la'anahullah and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shaitan give me time so that I will show you that the human beings you have honored are not worth it Allah gave him time and he gave him abilities to be with you to be with you to be with you to be with the guy in China to be with the guy in Alaska at the same time and those people that say oh, it's too much they don't say why shaitan has these abilities so the most cursed one they don't have issues with having extra things but the most honored ones they say no shirk what shirk he's the most honored in Allah's creation it's too much he, we are still saying Muhammadun Rasulullah messenger of Allah we are still saying abduhu wa rasuluh abd but an honored abd an honored servant an honored creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him what he likes to give him gave him Maqam Mahmud the highest station gave him uh, Shafa'a, intercession, when all nations will be waiting in difficulty and he will make sajda and ask, gave him so much to Allah gave him as abd. But they, they have an issue, they have a problem, they have a glitch. So these mawlids now, in these days, why we're we making so much mawlids? How many mawlids did we make? If anyone is, is uh, having a hard time sitting because it takes time to, to practice sitting on the floor. But if anybody, <laughs> we have chairs, we have also chairs upstairs uh, we can bring. But they, they have issues with when you speak about Prophet وسلم, and you speak about him as Abdullah, but as honor creation. And this is all from Naql, from Hadith, from Sunnah, from Quran. It is from Sunnah that he sees behind him as he sees in front of him. It is from Hadith. It is from Hadith that one that he, he sees without light. It is from Hadith that Sayyida Aisha, when she was looking for a needle and couldn't find it, when he walked in the room, she saw the needle. This is from Hadith. It's not from people's pockets. It's from Hadith, Sahih, that he went with his physical being on a night he was taken his his chest was open they took out his heart they put his heart in water of hikmah and washed it open heart surgery 1400 years ago by angels it is from sahih hadith it is from sahih hadith after that he went ascended through seven heavens every heaven the distance of traveling in that heaven is 500 years of Allah's years. And between one heaven and the next 500 years, your Nabi, your Prophet it's from Sahih Hadith. It's from Quran, Subhanallah asra bi abdi. Yet they want us to say he's just like you. When did you go on ascension? When did you traverse the heavens if he's just like you? Can you see behind you? Well, we can't see in front of us now these days. <laughs> we're walking. <laughs> we're walking with <laughs> with phones. <laughs> and they want us to say he's just like us. He's not. You have to respect him, honor him, to azziruhu wa You have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you for your own good. Because if you, if, you have, if you have respect and love for him, you're okay. Because that's the first 
the that's, that's what's going to be checked first in the grave. That's where the sorting starts. What do you say of this man? Oh, you say he's just those people who, who all their lives, he's just like us, he's nothing special, he's dead, he's gone. Like that they speak about the Prophet. When Allah said, Shuhada are alive, martyrs are alive. What about Ambiya? From Sahih Hadith, he said, when I when I flew, when when I was on the Buraq, Prophet in the hadith, he said, and he went over the qabr of Sayyidina Musa, he said, I saw my brother Musa praying in his grave. See, Musa, 2000 years after uh, he came to dunya, he was alive in his grave praying, according to Prophet. Then he went to, he went to Jerusalem. What happened in Jerusalem? Sayyidina Musa was waiting for him there also. With 124,000 prophets. And he led them in prayer prophet as their imam. They're dead. Ambiya. Their ruhaniya, their spirituality was waiting for him to pray behind him as their imam. And then he went up to heavens. Oh, he met them again. So Sayyidina Musa in his grave praying. Sayyidina Musa praying behind Prophet in Baytul Maqdis. Sayyidina Musa in the sixth heaven waiting for him as well. This is from our deen. This is not something people are inventing. This is from hadith, from sunnah, from Quran. This knowledge. So we this is, we hope inshallah this month will finish and we make a million mawlids, a billion mawlids in praise of Prophet. Mawlids now because Muslims have deviated from respecting and honoring the Prophet and giving him his due right. Mawlid now became essential, necessary. Not only they're not uh, something you should avoid. No, no, it's, it's necessity for Muslims to do mawlid now. To overly honor their Prophet Because of the poison that has been put through the hearts of the Ummah and changing their aqidah and their understanding about their Prophet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. I, don't, I was going to speak about his humility. <laughs> but alhamdulillah. <laughs> huh? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. With everything that's been granted to your Nabi, look at his. Perfect manners. Kamalu Tawadu'i. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This book of uh, it's called Insan al Kamil, the perfect human being of Prophet Sallallahu by one of the grandchildren of Prophet Sallallahu Dr. Sayyid Muhammad Ala Wil Malik al Hassan. He's a great Shaykh. Maybe uh, passed away and left dunya maybe like uh, 10 years ago or. or and he, he's, uh, he was based in Mecca and, and struggled so much against these people that we're talking about. He wrote this book. So what is, he, he starts by talking about the tawadu'. What does it mean linguistically? Tawadu'a is to, to humble oneself, to lower oneself. And he says, urfan, uh, what is customly known as tawadu is is that for a person to to uh, who has a who has a honor or who has a state station or who has status to lower himself below that status and he he doesn't have to for example a king a king sits on the throne and everybody sits in front of him in humbleness but if the king humbles himself and sit on the floor with everybody and eats with everybody, that's going uh, beyond what is expected of him, of his status, of his... Uh, that king now is a mutawadi. So sometimes people, people say oh, they, they act like humbly. But if you don't have the status and you humble yourself, it's not humility anymore because you're already not there. So what are you... You're low. This happens so much in our, uh, in, in Tasawwuf, if you've been around Sufis sometimes, we walk around like, oh brother, you are special. No, 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 I'm not. They, they act like humble. 
and we act humbly, you know, like as if. But this is assuming you have achieved a, a state and a station, and now you're humbling yourself. So it becomes sometimes the opposite of what it's meant to be. May Allah forgive us. Because if you haven't achieved that state, and you're showing humility, it's like, oh, what, what's the point? <laughs> It's assuming you have that state, and then and then you're showing humility. I mean, Allah forgive us. <laughs> they're already there, and they're showing humility. May Allah forgive us. We're all guilty of uh, of bad manners. So Abu Zayd radiyallahu an, he's quoting one of the Sahabas. Madam al Abdu yadun, one of the awliya. Madam al Abdu yadun an fi al khalq man huwa sharr min. من ما دام العبد يظن أن في الخلق من هو شر من فهو متكبر. look this is this is real تصوف تصوف this is real a moral excellence in Islam. he said as long as a person thinks there is somebody worse than him in creation he is still arrogant. يعني as long as as you think I think I am better than anyone in creation. Instead, you, you still have فَقِيلَ له. So when is he humble? He said, when he sees, does not see to himself مَقَالًا وَلَا حَالًا Then when he doesn't see any importance to himself whatsoever, either through his speech or through his state. Which one? Yeah, and he, he, real, real belief that he's has nothing, like he's no better than anybody. That it reflects in his speech, and it reflects in his actions. So it's easy to to to. Oh, I am yes. I think everybody is better than me, but then in my actions, in my state, when I go, if you say something to me, uh, I fight with you. If that one tells me, oh, I accuse this one of, so my actions don't reflect my claim of, of humbleness. So real humbleness is when your actual state, your actions, and your tongue show that you are, uh, you are, you are actually humble. That you, you actually treat people as if they are better than you, not just uh, say it. Well, this is this is the husn al-khuluq. So, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has the perfect. This this book is called the Perfect Man. So, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has perfection of manners. So, as that's the the height of what can be achieved as a human being. But manners, for us, for for followers, it's an endless uh, pursuit that a person can attain so uh, as much as one can most of us can't uh, can can't achieve months and it, it takes it takes a lot of training that's why there's teski that's why you follow you, you go to a true sheikh and who's done this and has passed the way past who's traveled this path and then they through their company through their uh, teachings through their advice and so forth then one can start to walk the path Walk the path, what does it mean to walk the path? Walk the path towards shedding the bad manners and, and filling oneself with good manners, the prophetic manners. That's walking the path. You know, until your heart is finally pure, you don't think ill of anyone, you don't see yourself better than anyone, uh, you're generous, you're merciful, you're, you adopt all, until a person becomes filled with these good Akhlaq al hamida That's how uh, the then you become closer, as close as you get to the role model, to the most beloved one to Allah. To to until you become closer to that to that, the, the closer you are to His manners, the more you have traveled. The farther you are, the less you have traveled. So He sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, He said one time. He 
He said, the closest to, to, to me on Judgment Day from amongst you are ahasinukum akhlaq, are the best people with the best manners. And then he asked, he was asked, well, what kind of manners are these? And he gave three examples. But these are to show you the height of attainment, to show you what, when we talk about awliya, when we talk about men of Allah, what are we talking about? He said, and ta'fu amman zalamak. So signs of your achieving those high ahasin al-akhlaq, most beautified of most excellent manners, is that you'll be able to forgive the one who oppressed you. Okay? So you have family, you have friends, you have whatever who wronged you, you wronged them, they don't want anything to do with you. Even when they've wronged you, you go on and you try to connect again with them. Okay? Three things. And then you're in need, and when you ask, nobody helped you. And then that person you've asked now is in need, and without being asked, you go and help. You know, so these are three examples of what it means. Prophet is saying, "Who's next? Who's going to be close to him on Judgment Day? People who have achieved such manners, who have uh, attained the moral excellence." Now, for us, we astaghfirullah, you know. The Mawlana used to say, trolley bole, one minute like this, one minute like that. Uh, we, we one step forward, sometimes two step backwards, one like this. May Allah forgive us. We're Akhirul Zaman people. We're talking about 10%. 10% uh, uh, not the 10% of Pakistan. <laughs> Similar, but from. Uh, no, Prophet وسلم, he said there will be a time when people do 10% of what they're expected of them in terms of religion, it will be enough for them. Because we live at this second ignorance age. But the idea is the, to strive to, to follow the example of Prophet وسلم. You know, and... and Sufism or Tariqa or Mashaykh is, is exactly that. Like the Mashaykh, they're, 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 you know, after you see, like when I met my Shaykh, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim, Qadis Lasarul Aziz, over 20 years ago, is through, through seclusions, through accompanying their Shaykh, through, through very difficult uh, training against their egos. For years, you know, Sheikh Nazim did so many seclusions. One year seclusion in Medina, uh, six months seclusion, uh, 40 days seclusions. Yeah, exactly. Sheikh will order him. His Sheikh ordered him to enter into seclusion. He gives him awrad and athkar, and that's all he does. So they went through lots of hardship, but at the end of it, when you meet them and you see that prophetic light reflected in them, their, their humbleness, their mercy, their humility, their care, how you go, you go to, uh, to visit them and you see, subhanAllah, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim, Allah sanctify his soul, he had people from all over the world, his house is open, everybody wanted his attentions. People coming with problems, with du'as, with difficulty, everybody fed at the darga, everybody welcomed. He had no privacy, he had no time to himself, no time to his family, not for one day, for one month, for one year, for over 40 years or 50 years, his life has been like that. Complete service. Yani the sacrifices they, they put on them, just like at the time of Prophet Sallallahu One delegation coming, one delegation going, one people want to meet him, one people want to take shahada, one people want to accept. Uh, for these mashayikh, it's always like this. Yani complete sacrifice of their comfort, of their likes and dislikes. And they're just full service for the Ummah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
They, they, they open their time, their life, the, everything is, is for that. And, and so that, those are role models. But for us, we read this and we say, Ya Rabbi, grant us a drop from this. Grant us something of that humility, of that understanding. And uh, we read just a couple of hadiths. And this is hadith he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in, in Bukhari, لا تطرني كما أطرت النصارى ابن مريم إنما أنا عبد فقول عبد الله ورسوله He said, don't don't praise me the way the Christians praised Sayyidina Isa and our brothers who have something against Prophet they're Muslims, but they like to what they say, they say, see Mawlid you are praising him now, you are honoring him like, no, read the hadith. He said, don't praise me like the Christians praise Sayyidina Isa. How did the Christians praise Sayyidina Isa? They say he's the son of God. And that's why Imam Busayri said, He said, leave what the Christians said about their prophet, that he is the son of God, Yani leave the fact that Prophet is Abd, just acknowledge that he is Abdullah and then say whatever you like in terms of praising him and honoring him. So he said here, he's telling his companions, he said, but say about me, he says, when you, when you say Abdullah, say Allah's Abd, Allah's servant, wa Rasuluh and his messenger. And من تواضعه صلى الله عليه وسلم that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم جاء عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه أن امرأة جاءت إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت A woman came to Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and and said to to him I have a need just imagine imagine somebody like in, in the Maqam of Prophet, Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, walking in Medina, and a woman came to him, and she said, I have a need from you. He said, wherever you want me to sit with you in Medina, I'll come and sit with you. Not come, follow me to my office. He said, I will come, and where do you want, where do you want to, to, to me to fulfill this need for you? You tell me, and I will come. This is your Messenger, your Prophet. A stranger. In another narration, that she, he was, in, that he, she, she kept him for some time, uh, talking to him on the road in Medina, that he listened to her fully until she gave, and it was, some, some time has passed while she's trying to uh, tell him her need. That she took him, and he was walking with his companions, and she took him, let's say, uh, in Medina, away from his companions, so that they weren't able to see him, and he was, she was t telling him her need privately. Away. And, he, and, and they were waiting for him, and this is just a, a normal human being. You see now, why I'm saying this about Prophet, why, why they're t telling you this about Prophet? Because he has Kamal Ta'i. He sees them as, as their Lord, as his Lord's servants. So when they come to him, he's not looking like we look. He's not looking, oh, this is such and such, this is such and such, this is such and such. He's seeing this servant of Allah, stopping him and asking him for, to help her. And that's it. So he's he's serving Allah by by listening to her, because he is Billah. This is Kamal, the perfection of manners. We'll stop here, inshallah, and we'll recite the Milad. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant us to be muhibbin.